Okay, before I begin, I'm going to make you do a small exercise or a short exercise. So I'd like all of you to pick a spot in the room and just stare at it for five, three to five seconds. Any spot. Even if you're at home, pick any spot on your couch. Okay, now continue looking at that spot and blink while you're doing it for about five to ten seconds. Just as you normally would, be comfortable. And now finally, I would like to ask you to close your eyes and to try and recreate that image that you formed in your head for about two to three seconds. Okay, now I know you think I'm trying to make you do something deep, something reflective, but actually I'm not. This is the process that you go through whenever you observe things on a daily basis. Now it's funny to notice how we never actually, we're never keen to take note of how we do these things and of how we observe, yet observing things actually dictates almost 80% of what we do, how we walk, how we talk, who we talk to, how we dress, what colors or what shades of colors we like, what we prefer to eat, how we view people around us. It influences so much that we do, but it's funny to notice that we actually don't take note of this. Now, we're coming to the realization that visual stimuli, or I don't need to iterate, that visual stimuli is actually very important in our life. What about if we add a few words, maybe a phrase, I am, uh, beautiful, gorgeous, anything. Think about when you read that in your mind or when you read that out loud while you're looking at whatever you're looking at, what impact it has on your brain. The, sense, the impulses that it sends to your brain are actually much stronger, hence impacting your memory, making sure that you even have a stronger memory and you're able to remember whatever you've seen and it will come out, it might influence whatever you do in five seconds, in the next few minutes, or in few years, or it might come to your mind as a thought, a dream, fantasy, anything. Ever wonder why advertising commercials have both pictures and words? That's how you always get to buy the same product, even though you don't like it, you buy it over and over again. <laughs> That's how they convince you. I come from one of the most peaceful countries in Africa, actually in the world. Kenya is the garden spot of Africa, arguably, but we are, it's the truth. However, in 2007, we proved the world wrong. And we went into a period of slaughtering each other based on ethnic differences. Now, this occurred after irregularities in the election results that took place on De December 31st. And we went on a period of 58 days where we had um, a post-election violence that was characterized by people killing each other based on ethnic differences. And over 1,300 lives were lost and over 600,000 people were internally displaced in Kenya. Now, during this period, I was unfortunate to actually stare death at its face. Three men decided that my life was worth taking due to the complexion of my skin, which is much fairer than that of many Kenyans, and is usually associated with that of members of a different, of different, of a different tribe. To them, they were convinced I was from the enemy tribe, and they even gave me a name from the quote-unquote enemy tribe. Now, I could feel the hatred of these three men rage through me, but I, I wasn't angry at them. I was very sorry for them. I felt sorry for them. And I could not understand why you'd want to take away my life based on something I could not control, based on my physical appearance. I could not understand why you'd want to take away my life, not because of my character, but because of my physical appearance. Luckily, I was able to escape from that situation. I was able to buy my way out, and where the words came out for me to negotiate my way out, I, I honestly cannot explain that, but luckily, I was able to get out of that situation without any scratch, without any bruise, and alive and breathing. 
However, my faith in humanity had been lost and shattered. In 2012, as I was studying at the African Leadership Academy in South Africa, I began to receive um, tips on my Facebook, and also I was reading so many political analyses that was speculating that Kenya would actually go into another period of violence, like the violence experienced in 2007 in our upcoming elections in 2013 that just passed a few weeks ago. Now, in my mind, I was blown away because I knew that we could not go back there as a country, and I was shaken, and I knew that I had to do something. Now, in the beginning, we realized that the power of observation is very influential. However, we're not keen to notice how it influences the actions that we do. And I thought to myself, because I was very keen to notice how this, this tool that we use in our daily activities influences me, I thought to myself, how about we try and use this tool for positivity? Because it's something that we all do regardless of our disability, we do it in one way or another. Hence, it unites all of us. This is a uniting platform, so why don't we use it to impact positive change? How do we channel this energy that we know that exists, but we can't quantify it, to impact positive change? How, do we, how are we able to contain our observations and share them with the world? How should we use technology, photography, you know, social media? And so with that in my mind, and me being a very hard-headed person, I did not think about it. And I just started calling on people on Facebook from all over the world to take a picture of themselves saying that they're Kenyan. Now, this picture was to stand up for peace in a part of the country, I mean, in a part of the world, because I believe in, I believe that we're all human beings before we're citizens of our different countries. And I believe that as citizens of the world, if one part of the world is ailing, we have to all reach out to that part, pick it up, and move on forward together. And so, regardless of whatever nationality you are from, regardless of how you look, whether you're fat, skinny, short, tall, it doesn't matter. We called, I, called up on, I called on to you to take a picture of yourself saying you're Kenyan with the words, I am Kenyan. And in four days, we had reached, we had an outreach of over 4,000 people. We had collected 85 photos from over 20 countries. And we had reached people with um, about from over 20 different languages who had taken their pictures and sent in their pictures and made them their profile pictures and cover photos saying that they're Kenyan. We had photos from Kenya, from Rwanda, from Mauritius, Senegal, the US. We had photos from the US. Um, that's from Portugal. People became more and more creative. Um, that's from India. And we then got one from Spain. And we got photos from everywhere. So now this movement was growing, and the world was actually becoming aware of other parts in the world. So how do I take this back to Kenya? How do I take it to the people? Because the reality is not a majority of the Kenyan population does not have access to social media. So how do you take this concept, or how do you take this observation that I want to see and share it with you? And so we took it to the streets. And we just started walking and talking to people one-on-one -on -one and being like, hey, this is what we want for our country. This is how we want to see our country. This is how we see our country. And we would like you to see it in the manner we are seeing it with us. And people recepted to that, and they were happy. And this is an example, for instance, where we just started. This is in one of the biggest slums in Kenya that was badly hit by the post-election violence. It's called Madare. And we just started walking about, we were about 10 people, and we were just walking with a tag saying, I am Kenyan, and holding up pictures of other people saying that they're Kenyan, and we had a mass of over 400 people for loss. And that's when I knew that we are innately similar, and that this tool of, of observation, this thing that we use, really does influence us, and that can actually um, lead to positive change. Even the old, the old who had lost faith in Kenya because they had seen it undergo through so much suffering as a nation, 
were actually rejuvenated and optimis optimistic, and they actually saw that Kenya is moving forward. And they actually shared what they want for Kenya with us by taking a picture saying that they're Kenyan. We had musicians actually saying, hey, this is my country as well. I want to stand up for peace. We had individual, normal people, very optimistic. We had the women say, hey, this is also a country. We gave birth to you. We want peace. <laughs> we had foreigners who you'd assume, hey, I mean, I'm from the US. I don't really care about Kenya. But they're like, no, guys, no, this is our home. It's part of the world. We're citizens of the world. We are going to say we're Kenyan, and we're going to stand up for peace. People who work in the shops. We had couples. We had children who normally people assume they do not know what is going on in the world, but you forget that how do babies learn how to do things? They observe. So they do know what's happening. And they said, hi, guys, I want to be Kenyan. More children. Even more children, <laughs> high school children, who are very, you know, teenagers, never know, but they were like. <laughs> and politicians. This is our former vice president, and to him, he was like, I love my country as much as you love your country, and I will actually show Kenyans that I'm ready to identify myself as a Kenyan first before identifying myself, identifying myself based on ethnic terms and differences. This was also, an, um, a f he was a running, he was running for a presidential seat in the elections, but regardless of that, he didn't care about his political position, he cared about the, his country first. And this is the former police spokesman who also, who also stood up for peace. And this is the most touching story to me because this is a group of s um, street children, and most often than not, people ignore them and people assume that they do not have a voice in our country. However, they reached out to us and they're like, we want to also stand up for peace. And with our help, what we did is we painted their faces with the colors of the flag and wrote the words peace on their forehead. And silently, without disturbing anyone, Nairobi traffic is as bad as traffic in New York. And we just walked within the traffic, and we didn't talk to anyone. And that sent a positive, a strong message to the extent that media houses actually rushed to the scene. But we weren't trying to cause that. But I thought that was very touching, that they actually did approach us and say, hey, guys, we actually also want to sh um, show our voice. And companies as well, corporates said, this is our country as well. We are affected, and we also want to stand up for peace. And in eight months, we had a, um, an outreach on Facebook of over 2 million, but a global outreach of over 4 million, because um, when you combine the statistics from our website and everything, and we had collected, and we have, and are still collecting, last time I checked, we had about 21,875 photos from all over the world. And this is also one of the ways in which I also sh knew how positive this too is in the sense that Wycliffe Fulich was told us that thank you for giving me the feeling of being a Kenyan citizen that's giving me the confidence to participate in both communal and national activities such as voting through your photo peace campaigns and Zoe Fender from Ukraine was like before the project I knew nothing about Kenya however after seeing the movement I was probed to research on Kenya and its history I am now proud to say that I am Kenyan and I stand for peace and with this, we're able to move from this to this, because I am proud to say that Kenya just underwent its elections a week ago, and it's peaceful. And this has been the most democratic elections we've ever experienced in my country, with a voter turnout of 88%, which is the highest turnout that has ever been seen in Africa. <laughs> I mean, I won't take I won't take all the credit for it because the, <laughs> no, I'm serious. Because the whole country did invest in this, but I would like to say that I'm very proud and I'm a very proud Kenyan. And at the end of the day, we are all Kenyan. Thank you. Thank you.